does a child-friendly 3D printer exist and is the CR100 from Creality it? In this video, we'll discuss various attempts and failures at creating a truly toy kid-friendly 3D printer and whether such a thing should exist in the first place. Let's get started. How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse and this is the CR100 from Creality. Yes, this is a commercial 3D printer you can really buy. I picked one up from JCar here in Australia for $300 Australian, but you can pick them up from Creality directly for 160 US. I find it fascinating because, well, it's clearly aimed at kids. There's no two ways about it. The fully injection model design has this ridiculous Transformers inspired aesthetic. They've even gone so far as to attach grills, exhaust pipes and windows to complete the look. It's made to look like a toy. I was first introduced to this machine by Naomi Wu over on her channel, Sexy Cyborg. So definitely go check out her review of it, linked in the video description. This video though, isn't just about the CR100. It's actually more of a critical look at the child-friendly 3D printer market segment. Here's the thing, children are smart really smart. And a few years ago, I ran a few clubs at my old school with STEM and 3D printing and saw firsthand how quickly nine to 14 year olds can pick up 3D software like Tinkercad and the concept of additive manufacturing. Unlike a lot of people, kids just get it. They understand the technology and they just want to make something cool with it. In 2015, I purchased the Fabricator Mini from Hobby King, which is also conveniently around the $300 Australian mark. And in my review, I concluded that while the machine was impressively designed and cost effective for the time, it was just a bit too finicky, fragile and difficult to use to really be called a toy or used in a hands-off manner with children. If you need to run the machine for them, well, you might as well buy a more advanced 3D printer like the more recent and ultra popular Ender 3. Then in 2017, the 101 Hero was launched on Kickstarter, another small, colorful design with children in mind. The launch price was ridiculous, with mine costing only $49 US plus shipping for an early bird pledge, and you can still buy them on AliExpress for about 120 bucks US. The design was cleverly done to reduce cost below anything achieved before using 3D printed pen mechanics and tiny low cost geared stepper motors instead of the more bulky and expensive NEMA 17s. It really did come close. It can even print of an SD card instead of tethering, but a total lack of interface and woefully low torque motors meant for a slow, buggy, painful experience. I'm impatient, but children are even more so. And there has been many, many more, way too many to cover. But in my opinion, none of them have succeeded in creating the easy bake oven of 3D printers, something you could literally let a child go nuts on, create objects with and do it completely on their own. Mattel and Autodesk actually did have a machine called the Thing Maker penned for release some years ago. And I was really excited for that, but it just never happened. So, why do these machines fail? Well, in my brutal opinion, they're approaching the entire issue wrong. You might think designing a 3D printer for kids means slapping a colorful cover on it over an existing design and making some UI tweaks, but really, the entire design approach needs to be flipped on its head. If I may be so bold, 3D printing enthusiasts, like myself, generally chase quality over reliability and safety. We care about safety, absolutely, but I'm not gonna be sticking my fingers into the fans or touching the hot end. I generally think I have more common sense than that. And if a 3D printer fails, I can just cancel, reset, and recover it without much fuss. This is especially the case for those of us who started with a kit 3D printer, because you will be able to tinker, repair, and upgrade the machine and its components. But for a machine aimed at young kids, let's say seven to 14 year olds, reliability and safety has to come first above quality. I also believe it needs seamless usability from 3D model to finished print, something no one's really been able to crack yet. Again, this is a hypothetical easy bake oven approach to a 3D printer, one that is truly kid friendly and safe to be used while you might not be looking. Now the CR100 does get a lot of this right. The print volume is 100 by 100 by 80 millimeters, small, but not unusable. And it has a removable sheet steel plate for the bed, which can be flexed to pop prints off. It's held in place with magnets and they're a little iffy for reliability. So Creality included additional clips for added security, 
but dubious effectiveness. Out of the box functionality was also surprisingly high. In my recent stream, I had it printing without any calibration required. And it was only after the stream that I realized why. The hot end is actually spring loaded. So if it's too close to the bed, it'll literally compensate and the print will still complete without the machine destroying itself. In terms of safety though, the machine is mostly enclosed, sure, but the sides are wide open, so curious fingers can still get in and get hurt or burnt, so mega fail there. Doors do not need to be complicated. The CEL Robox that I reviewed years ago had a simple mechanical lock that was actuated by the print bed moving over a lever, and there is no reason that couldn't be done here. The controllers through micro SD card, pretty common, but a bit of a choking hazard, and makes the process of slicing and transferring files from PC to the printer definitely a parental supervision task. Filament loading though, it's pretty simple. I'm using the external spool here because the holder is for tiny spools and I think kids could do it. But the interface, oh the interface. A small bright OLED screen is all you get and three buttons. But here's the thing, three buttons, start, pause, home and preheat. There's also a remote control with the same three functions, literally the same functions. The printer will print the latest G-code on the card when you hit play. Um, I'm not sure what that actually means. But yeah, they could have done a lot more with that remote control. I don't know why they chose the same three inputs. It's very strange. I don't know what it's there for, but there you go. The first 3D printer I've ever seen with a literal remote control. Overall though, you can get away mostly with these three interface buttons, but I will say if you home to the bed and try to load filament in, you can't bring the nozzle back up, which is really frustrating. It should home and then bring up again because it homes before the print starts anyway. Um, so that could be an easy fix. I don't know why they didn't do it. Print quality on a machine like this, like I said, is not the most important factor when I consider a 3D printer to be child friendly. And the CR100 handles simple prints fine, like my little maker coin recently. And benches in a range of PLAs came out okay, but they clearly show cooling issues and a bit of print accuracy problems. But I couldn't even test clearances with my clearance gauge because the PLA warped the spring steel plate so much it came loose from the magnets. I tried again with the clips, you know, these little afterthought clips, but it just warped off the print bed instead. So despite having a great first layer, even PLA can warp on a non-heated bed. So to sum up this whole video, should you buy the CR100 or any 3D printer for your kids to use unattended? Uh, no. I'm gonna be honest here, I'm not comfortable giving any 3D printer on the market today toy status despite valiant efforts so far. And well, this leaves quite a dilemma because if you're already helping them learn, why not do so with a real 3D printer? Like I said at the start of this video, the Ender 3 or any of its clones would be a fantastic learning experience for both you and the child as long as you make sure they're always supervised when they're using it, it's a team effort and they can both be had for comparatively the same price. I do honestly wish for a day when even children can have their creativity empowered through 3D printing technology, but companies just need to stop slapping colored plastic onto 3D printer frames and calling it a day because so many other factors need to be considered. I'd love to hear your thoughts though in the comments below. And full disclosure guys, I purchased this machine with my own money. I don't know why, but all thoughts in this video are my own. And if you enjoyed this video here on Makers Muse, maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss the next one. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.